in my own hands I am my own justice I am my own man I never look behind through all that I have seen cause all I need is white lines and gasoline white lines and gasoline game white lines and gasoline white lines and gasoline American way, and we built this country called the USA, and we fly our flag because we're proud and free, we're Americans. Red, white, and blue is our way of life, we never back down from a challenge or a fight, nature provides, God gives the rights, we're Americans. We make up America, but it's amazing America. Waters and we hunt the lands. We force the steel with our own two hands. With what we've got, we do the best we can. We're Americans. From the snowy pass to the desert sun. Dogs and the horses and the trucks and the guns. Mothers and daughters and fathers and sons. We're Americans. We make up America. It's amazing America. Amazing, amazing. 
Help gets there faster. The cleanup specialists at 1-800-SERVE-PRO and SERVEPRO.com. Helping make fire and water damage like it never even happened. You're watching all pro broadcasting with Freedom Trail. Welcome, race fans, to the Domino's TYJ Racing Dennett Fenders Series live here at Eldora Speedway on All Pro Broadcasting. My name is Robert McFarland. Welcome in the booth are two of my favorite people, Tim and Michelle Rangers. How y'all doing tonight? We're doing good. Very good, good Robert. How are you doing? No complaints here. I tell you what, this is going to be an action-packed race. Uh, this is our very, very first trip. For the Domino's TYJ Racing Den Defender Series on the dirt here at Eldora. We're giving all you fans a preview for what's coming up next Wednesday night live on Real TV, which will be the Eldora race, uh, the Camper World Truck Series. So we're going to give you a preview of what it's going to look like. Hopefully, you enjoy this one more than you enjoy the one next Wednesday night. Uh, I think, Tim, you might have some track facts for us, real quick. Yeah, I, I do. First off, a uh, big fact is that I usually run this league, but tonight I'm going to be in the booth since it's a non-points race. I'll be in this next week, and with my uh, times not being quite as, as uh, fast as some of the other drivers, it should be interesting to see how, uh, how that goes. But as far as this track's concerned, we are in my home state, not a far drive from actually where I live. Eldora is actually the world's greatest dirt track. It's located in western Ohio, a little town called New Weston, uh, Ohio which is kind of a uh, north northwest of Dayton, if you're familiar with where Dayton is. But um, track's actually owned by race car driver Tony Stewart, uh, NASCAR Sprint Cup uh, champion. Three-time, in fact. Um, he's an Indiana native. He purchased Eldora from the legendary promoter Earl uh, uh, Baltz, I do believe, in uh, 2004. And it's been uh, racing and hosting dirt tracks since 1954, Robert. Wow, that is a long time. And I tell you what, how long has the uh, Camping World Truck Series been racing here at Eldora? That is a darn good question. Um, Camping World, I can I can look that up for you. I'm not exactly sure how many years it's been it's been uh, hosted at Eldora, but I could I could find that information for you real quick if you'd like. Or we can get our uh, famous statistician Michelle Rangers to look that up for yeah, us. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds like a good deal. Michelle Michelle's on that right as we speak, Robert. Uh, hey. I'll tell you, Robert, I was kind of uh, happy about tonight. Uh, Michelle only raced five five laps, I do believe, on the practice session here on the dirt track, and I think she was a little bit faster than you. She absolutely was. I'll be the first uh, person to admit, uh, when it comes to racing, I'm not that fast. I'm uh, decent here on the uh, microphone. A lot of people will argue that fact. But I do a pretty good job running the league. Some people will argue that fact. But on the racing surface, I'm not very good, and I'm absolutely terrible in any kind of vehicle on the dirt. And Michelle is much better than I am for sure. She definitely beat me by about a half a second in the earlier practice. So Michelle and I and Tim have all had laps here tonight at Eldora earlier to get an idea. And I tell you what, this is a very, very, very trick, uh, tricky, slick track in these uh, heavy, high-horsepower trucks. Uh, that Camping World Series brings here that we have tonight. So it's going to be a fun race, and the winner is going to be the guy or the girl who can maintain the truck all the way around the track, including all of the caution laps. If we have any, it's going to be a real, real fun race. Yeah, this this track is actually like literally like racing on glass, Robert. Um, Gabriel Wood, Gabe, Gabe Wood, was number one in the practice sessions. He was number one just until Gary Sexton just... Uh, Beat him out just looks like by two one hundredths of a second going into this this practice session before the qualifying. Yeah, I tell you what, we got a lot of fast drivers, and we got some drivers who uh, are going to have to be patient tonight and keep all four fenders on the truck. As we know, when your truck gets wrecked, 
to the point where you can't race anymore, you're going to be out of the race. And so for right now, it definitely looks like uh, Gary has got the top time. We'll see if anybody else can beat him here in the last minute. And while we're doing that, we're going to talk to our good friend, Gabriel Wood. Gabriel Wood in the double zero. You were fastest in practice. You had the pole here for a few minutes. Gary's set to knock you off. What are you expecting for the race tonight? I'm expecting a good run. <laughs> like I told uh, Brandon Montsevice, uh, you're in my house now. You guys run all the asphalt you want. But you come to the dirt, you got to deal with me and a couple other guys. So it's going to be fun. Uh, I, I tried running the top uh, during these qualifying laps. I guess I just missed the pole. So that's going to suck a little bit. But... Yeah, I was really surprised, Gabe. Gary uh, put down an 18.333, beat you out by just about two one-hundredths of a second there. How do you feel about that? Not good, considering uh, what was, I was three-tenths faster than him in practice. So I think I, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think what I could go back and do, but I don't think I could have done anything different. No problem at all, Gabe. Good luck tonight. Hopefully you keep all four fenders on it. You stay out of trouble. And hopefully we talk to you in Victory Circle. Yeah, hopefully we get this Veterans Motorsports double zero up front. Well, it shouldn't take long uh, starting from second. Yes, sir. Good luck. There are a lot, a lot of really fast laps uh, laid down in qualifying tonight, Robert. Yes, sir, Tim. If you and Michelle will take turns, uh, maybe, Tim, you can go through the first ten starting lineup and michelle if you cover the second half 11 through the end of the field guys who took times that'd be awesome all right we've got uh the number 17 truck of gary sexton uh qualified first with an 18.333 gabe wood right behind him with 18.352 in the double zero car david washington in the 98 with an 18.384 24 car of colin bowden um, qualified fourth. He was also under that 18.4 uh, mark with an 18.395. Had Ryan A. Hill in the 55, qualifying fifth. In sixth, we have Curtis Young in the 94. In the uh, number seventh position, Blake Griffith, my teammate, in the number two car from JTM Motorsports. Number eight, Jeremy Crandall in the 73. We've got uh, Brandon Cruz uh, Monsivius in the number 54 car, qualified ninth. And in tenth, Ray Richard in the number 44. Michelle? In the 89 car, we got Giovanni Bromante with the time of 18.821. The car 77 of Jack Watts in number 12th position, 18.823. We have car 56, Josh Bonwell, number 13th position. We have car 85, Judd Danielson in the 14th position. Car 26, Eric Standard, 15th at 18.958. And we have car 42, David Wright, who is 16th, is the 19.047. And we have car 46, Bo Glenn, in green, green, green. position 17. And we are green, green flag racing. Yeah, thank you so much, sir, Michelle. It does look like the double zero of Gabriel Wood. We just talked to him, tries to get a jump on the lead there. It looks like he's got a, some serious competition with, looks like Gary Sexton, the 70 on the outside, as well as the 24 of Colin Bowden. He's almost touching Trey oh, Payton there with the double zero. Yes, sir, I tell you, anytime you see some guys jump right in here, this so far has been an exciting start of the race, and that's what we call it, the Dennett Finner's Truck Series. What are you seeing up front there, Tim? Uh, I'm seeing Gary Sexton hold on to a, to a pretty good lead. Uh, as time around the track seems to be speeding up as well. Um, Gabriel Wood trying to hold on to that second spot with Colin Bowden right on his tail. Yeah, and right behind him, I just noticed the 98 of Dave Washington just got into the wall. I tell you what, fans, you're going to see that pretty often tonight. If you just graze the wall, you're probably going to be okay. But if you get into that wall too many times, like I think Kyle Larson did last year here at Eldora or the year before that, you're going to ruin your truck, and that's going to ruin your night. Gary is, Gary is pulling away right now in that season's pizza truck of his, that number 17 season's pizza truck. Good-looking paint on that truck tonight. Going to have a lot of dirt on it. Going to need a good car wash after this, this race is complete. Yes, sir. I just noticed Dave Washington got in the wall again. He is trying to run that extreme high line, and that's exactly where you want to run, but you do not want to get in the wall. We do have a caution out. We'll get that replay pulled up in just a minute or two. Did you see uh, what happened there? I did not. My all eyes on Gary Sexton here. Yeah, looks like looks, the 73 Jeremy of Jeremy Crandall. Crandall. 
Yep, we're gonna get the replay pulled up, fans. And the number two had some contact there. Oh, Blake's truck is really dented up in the front front part of his truck. He is not gonna be a happy man. Uh, he's very worried about this track tonight. As as his teammate, I'm kind of kind of pulling for him, but you know you've got to be in a broadcast like this. You can't be uh, too particular. But that's that's tough for Blake Griffin. Yes, sir. Exactly. Looks like what happened. Uh, these two trucks just got together. It actually looks like the 73. As you're going to see all night tonight, uh, Tim and Michelle, these trucks will get, they're going around the corners, basically sideways all the way around. It's a beautiful sight to see, especially when these guys can control it. Obviously, the 73 overcorrected. As he overcorrected, he got right in front of the number two, and that caused a big wreck. Unfortunately, both those trucks have got some heavy damage, and uh, it'll be interesting to see if they can get back in or get any laps done. Both very clean drivers uh, every Wednesday on asphalt but dirt as we know a whole different thing or maybe i shouldn't say dirt maybe i should say clay this is actually a clay track exactly everybody thinks this is a dirt track which technically it is but the actual base of this track is all dirt tracks are they're made of clay correct tim that is correct you know you pour you got to have that water mixture just right in clay it's just like you know if you could put the whole track in a kiln that'd be a that'd be a really nice statue robert yeah i tell you what so right now it looks like who we have up front for this restart is going to be the double zero and the 17. I'll let me take the restart. We got Gary Sexton on the inside, Gabriel Wood on the outside, and Gabriel looks like he's. Oh no! I thought he was going to get him on the inside there, but he did not get Sex on the inside. We've got some some contact there coming from. Looks like the uh, 50 55 car of Ryan. A. Wall slowed down a little bit. Yeah, I tell you what. Back of the pack, that 89 cars. Oh, yeah, right, yellow down. flags out again. It looked like uh, a little bit of contact there. Yes, sir. We will bring that replay up as soon as we can. Give us just a couple of minutes, a couple of seconds there, fans. What did you see, Tim? Again, I'm kind of on the middle of the pack. I, I missed that. Keep it open. Keep it open. Yeah, it looks like the 77. Jack, Jack Watts, 77 car. Looks like he, um... Yeah, looks like the 77 is up on his deck. Looks like he got to that corner. A similar situation to before. He's running that extreme high line. He gets it going straight. Looks like he actually made contact, unfortunately, with the 23 at Dylan C. Jones. I tell you what, these guys are racing in very, very close quarters. You come off these corners sideways, and yes, fans, that's exactly what you're seeing. A truck's right in the way, and that's exactly what happened. He got contact from Chad Payne. Oh, we've got we've got drivers tonight that have never run dirt, Robert. I mean, a lot of these drivers they are they are you know really high-end professional drivers on the asphalt, but when it comes to dirt, like myself, uh, you know I'm you know a little scared to get dirty. You know, you got to take a shower after this race. Yeah, absolutely. You need a shower. You probably need a second shower, and you got to probably have your clothes washed two or three times there, Tim. I bet. I mean, this is just, uh, it's a slick track. I mean, I, you know, I, I, I've raced here, and I was, I was in the practice sessions. I ran about 100 laps, and just a tough track to really keep control of. Um, the line, you, you literally, and I, it was explained to me by Gabe Wood, you, you have to be on and off the throttle so much, and, he, you know, just turning. You're almost, you're almost facing the wall when you're going into the turns, Robert. And, you know, it's something the asphalt guys just aren't used to. You know, you don't, you don't practice it enough. You know, it's something like a road course, um, but a whole different animal. Green flag, green flag. And we're back to green, Robert. Yes, sir. Tell us about the restart. We've got Gary Sexton, Gabe Wood, and David Washington all out front. Uh, I'm taking a look at Gabe right now, and... He is falling back from Gary Sexton. Uh, just looks like about a half a second behind right now. Seems to be catching him on the turns, but on those straightaways, Gary is just pulling off, and uh, Gabe was just half a second ahead of him about this whole field during the practice session. So this track must be really suited right now. That mud getting packed, that clay rather, where Gary uh, is taking advantage of it. Yeah, I can tell you one thing, Tim. I know these drivers almost like I know the back of my hand. Uh, we've been doing this for about going on three years now. Most of these drivers are new for 2017, but All in right, 2017, man, it, uh, it, it has been a long year so far. And Gary Sexton, yeah, another caution, fans, bring that up real quick. Gary Sexton, like a lot of the drivers who are 
winning most of the asphalt races. They put in a lot of practice laps. I think Gary told me he's put in 400 laps here on this track this week. What did you see on that caution? Looks like Sean Kalis um, got into somebody, Robert. I'm, I'm not not quite seeing it. It looks like he's in that 45. He had a little bit of issues there. I got him right now on the replay. Looks like coming out of the, coming out of the corner. He's going to the high, high side of the groove there. All these cars are trucks are sideways. He just was not able to correct that. And the six of uh, Campbell had nowhere to go and got right into him. And on that note, fans, we're going to tell you how you won that free pizza tonight. We have had about 15, 16 laps. We've had a few cautions, which could be uh, the norm for tonight. For fans, like we do every Wednesday, Thursday, and Sunday night, we give away a large three-topping free Domino's pizza. And simply, this is how you can win it. This lap, this race, excuse me, is 85 laps by halfway, which is lap 40. What is it, Tim? Half of 85 is 42 and a half. 42 and a half. So we'll call it lap 43. We'll give you an extra half lap, fans. The first fan to actually predict the winner of this race by lap 43 will win that free pizza like last week. It was Erica Estep. She won her second pizza this year. And, uh, Tim, we've given away a whole lot of those this year. better with track racing the pizza, Robert. I tell you what, I'll let you uh, take this uh, restart again. All right, 17 of Gary Sexton. It looks like he's taking the outside line. Gabe Wood on the inside in the double zero car. Great looking paint from him tonight. And they are green. Brandon Cruz has moved up uh, from ninth into third place right now. Seems to seems to be uh, catching the field. Yes, I tell you what, some of these other drivers. And he literally just disappeared. I think he might have had a connection. Oh, no, he didn't disappear. He's in first. He's, he's got... Showing me he's got the lead. All right, man. Caution is out. Caution is out. He blinked for a second, I think, Robert. I think he had a connection error, and it showed me it showed him in first on my screen, and then it's all of a sudden he's he's in sixth. Uh, Forty-five car in that, Robert, and I think the seventy-two of Ivan Garcia as well uh, involved in that. David Wright and uh, Ivan Garcia seem to have got into each other a little bit, a little bit too much. Uh, too much trading pain in that. Yeah, exactly. It definitely looks like it was the 45 again. And who else do you see? Uh, 42 of David Wright and uh, Ivan Garcia in that 72 car. Yes, these drivers are learning every single week. Unfortunately, they had a little bit of issues there. It definitely looks like uh, some of these guys are back on the track. Uh, we had Gerald Campbell involved in an earlier caution, the 73 as well, of Jeremy Crandall. He's back on the track. So a lot of times these trucks have uh, cautions or damage. They're able to get back out here and keep running. And Curtis, Curtis Young has moved up one position from his qualifying time. As you know, Curtis won last year's entire um, Dent and Fenders truck series. He was the winner, so he got promoted to Xfinity. And I think he might be running Cup this year, is he, is he not? Yes, he is only running these non-point races. Yeah, any driver, by the way, if, uh, Domino's race fans, uh, any driver can run the non-points races in any of the series. So you, you get a lot of the truck drivers like me are up against people who are much, much faster in races like this, like a um, David Washington or a Gabe Wood. Um, these are some of the, the high-end uh, drivers and Gabe Wood and David obviously have been practicing dirt along with Gary because they are all uh, top three right now as we go green. Gary's on the inside and, or on the outside rather. Um, looks like he's sharp turn and uh, Gabe right behind him with Ryan A. Hill coming up. Yes, sir. This, yes, sir. Looks like Ryan A. Hill's moved up smartly and gave her a wood in that number, number double zero. He just touches the inside wall. He's trying to work in that low groove to try to make it work, and it's uh, not not he's, working out too bad. He's in third. He's got him right now. He's got him right now. Ryan A. Hill has moved ahead of Gabe. Exactly, exactly. And behind him, we have David Washington. He's always a threat on any kind of asphalt track we race. Obviously, this is a learning curve for him as well. And like you mentioned, Curtis Young in that number 94, he is as well trying to uh, make his way forward. Looks like he's putting a slide job on Gabriel Wood. Gabriel gets in the back of him. 
No harm, no foul, a little bit of trade and paint. And that definitely gives uh, Gio Vermonte and that 89 room to get in front of the double zero. Giovanni, another one of the drivers in the series that uh, runs uh, real cars. I need to talk to him about a little more about that to find out exactly what he's running. Robert, do you know that? Yes, he is one running uh, the super late model, I'm pretty sure. He races a couple of times a month, and he actually races for David Gilliland Racing, which is a top-notch team. Would not surprise me at all, fans. Yes, you heard me right. The number 89 at Gio Bramante, you will probably see him in the truck series on real TV in real life here in the next 12 to 24 months. And you're watching him live right now on All Pro Broadcasting. Make sure, fans, you click the subscribe button. Uh, that way you get all the alerts for the free, the free pizza. Like we said earlier, these laps are going to go by a little bit faster now that we've had a few trucks to wreck out. So before lap 42, 43, excuse me, fans, the first fan to actually predict the winner of this race, you will win that large three-topping Domino's pizza like we've given about 30 of them away so far this year. And this is some great racing. This is. And, you know, this field, Robert, was really interesting. Gary Sexton still in the lead. David Washington just passes Ryan A. Hill. Uh, to go into second, but this field is diverse because you look at a, a race car driver like Giovanna Bramante in real life, and you also look at other race car drivers who have driven in real life like Ivan Garcia, and the age range goes from 13 all the way to 72 right, years old. Out. Caution is out. Yeah, I tell you what, as we say that, the uh, caution has just come back out. Uh, did you see who was involved in that one? I did not. I wish I did. I'm, I'm concentrating on the the uh, leaders right now. Looks like the number six of Gerald Campbell had a few issues there. Gerald Campbell uh, back right now in the 17th position. Uh, with yeah, I'm looking at the replay right now, fans. It definitely looks like he was coming out of the corner. On the outside, he had, it looks like the 04. Excuse me. That would be the 04 of Brian Kutz. Kutz, excuse me. They just made some contact, and it just turned uh, Gerald Campbell head, head strong, head front into the outside retaining wall, and that might do it for Gerald Campbell as he rolled two or three times down the back stretch. You don't see that much here at Eldora, yeah, as, as but right you now, saw it tonight. On the lead lap, I wonder if he, if he's completely out or if he's just going to go a few laps down. Yeah, I would imagine he could be done for the night, or at least with a lot of damage. So I tell you what, fans, so far it's been entertaining. Again, like I said, uh, you do have the chance to win that free pizza. I tell you what, Michelle, uh, give the fans the details on how to win that free pizza again, if you don't mind, Michelle. Yes, the first um, fan that picks the winner of the race tonight by lap 43 wins a three-topping Domino's pizza carryout only. You can text your win or you can... Um, you can text it to 919-883-7497. Thank you there, Michelle. Also, fans, you can comment in the live chat. We do have Josh's mom. That would be Josh Bonwell. She is in the uh, live text. She's already picked her son in the 56, as always, every single week. And one of these weeks, he's going to win, and she's going to win that free pizza herself. I'll let you take the restart here, Tim. All right, we've got the number eight of David Washington moving up into the second position. Gary Walk Gary uh, Sexton on the outside. Looks like David and Gary... Oh, he... And the 89 of Giovanni Bryan taking the outside line to, to pull into the second position. This, he is, he is, this kid is just on fire this season. I'll tell you what. Another thing to keep in mind is this track is changing every single lap. And we do have the 89 of Gio Bramante. Looks like he started all the way back in 11th position. He is racing that David Gilliland Racing Toyota Tundra truck. He is all the way up to second. It would not surprise me at all, Tim and Michelle, to see him in victory circle here because he knows how to manhandle all these trucks. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, Tim, you mentioned age earlier. I think he is the ripe old age of 13. Maybe yes, 14. That, that is correct. He is actually 13 years old and competing with the big boys out here tonight, Robert, on, on dirt at Eldora. Yeah, right now on the inside, he's got David Washington, which I think is a type of a mentor to him. On the inside of him, we got uh, the double zero of Gabriel Wood. Some fantastic racing here. But I am pretty sure that Gabriel Wood is in his 20s, and I wouldn't be shocked if uh, the 98 of David Washington is a little bit older than that. Maybe close to my age, Ryan Hay Hill is making a move on the inside here of the double zero. 
is trying to make that bottom line move. So this 13-year-old is showing these older guys how to get it done here at Eldora in the dirt in these trucks. I'm watching a little bit back of the pack. Uh, Curtis Young in the 94 car has actually dropped all the way back to ninth. Um, I'm not sure if he's having some issues with the changing track or uh, possibly some damage to his, his truck. It looks like that, that rear spoiler uh, may have some damage, you know, holding him back a little bit, Robert. Yes, sir. I've definitely looked. He's got damage on the right front fender as well as the whole right side. And I'm pretty sure the 94 of Curtis Young has been in the wall two or three times tonight. As always, Curtis is definitely driving that, excuse me, Dive Bomb Motorsports Go Fast Energy Drink Truck. And he's got damage on the back, the right side, the right front. I tell you what, as you watch these trucks go around this, this track, in front of him we got the 56 of Josh Bonwell. I mentioned him earlier, he's got a little bit of right damage on the right rear of that play seat, number 56. This Great sponsor for him. Because these, these trucks are not meant for this type of track and these for drivers, so I really have a hard time handling these trucks on this track. A lot of, lot of horsepower in these trucks, Michelle. A lot of horsepower for a small track like this at Eldora. Yes, sir, I tell you what, and it's making the slide job work. In front of him, we've actually got the, uh, looks like the number 26, normally the number 24, of Eric Stanford with the ESBilliards.com Toyota Tundra. Fans, you do not want to miss tomorrow night's race. It will be sponsored by ES Billiards. It's the ES Billiards 240 at Watkins Glen. That's in kilometers. You do not want to miss that race. In front of him, we've got another driver. Looks like it's the 23 of Dylan C. Jones. He has moved all the way up to sixth position. Looks like Dylan started back in 21st. A great run for Dylan. In front of him, it looks like we've got, excuse me there, the 55 of Ryan A. Hill. He is always in that hunt the truth, Halo 5. Chevy Silverado. He is a great real-time uh, dirt racer, especially on go-karts. He has moved his way up to fourth. S excuse me. And in front of him, we've got Gabriel won the double zero as we're having a really good uh, green flag run here. As as well, in front of him, we have the 98 of David Washington. Get my words mixed up this action. That was so fast. Tim and Michelle. In front of him, we've got the 89 of Gio Bramante. Like I said, he, actually tonight, he's in that DGR Bramante Racing Toyota Tundra. Gary, Gary Sexton's actually pulled a full second ahead of Giovanni and David Washington and G Gabe Wood, who had the fastest time in the in the four-hour practice prior to the race tonight, Robert. I tell you what, fans, you've got about, uh, I think we've already passed the halfway point to get the pick in for the pizza. We'll definitely update you when the race is over. But yes, Gary Sexton, like I mentioned before, he is driving that cross-continent racing Hexcom, Hexcam.net 17 uh, Chevy Silverado, and he's putting some laps on these slower drivers. Uh, he spent, like I said, probably 400 laps on this track earlier this week, and he is doing a fantastic job as he is lapping trucks left yeah, and right. Just lapped Ivan Garcia there in the 72 Tide truck, and Ivan looks like he got into uh, got into somebody as he as he lapped him to bring out that yellow. Yeah, we do have another caution on the track. We'll get that pulled up here in just a minute. I'm off. I'm done. What did you see there as far as uh, what happened, uh, Michelle or Tim? I, I saw Ivan uh, go low, and it looked like somebody, uh, I, I'm not sure which truck that was, that was right in front of Ivan, but it uh, looked like they were coming over, maybe didn't see Ivan there, and uh, Ivan Ivan might have hit the, the driver's side door, so we're hoping that uh, that driver's okay tonight. Yeah, I got the replay pulled up right here. It does look like the 72 tide ride of Ivan Garcia. He's got in front of him, it looks like the 33. That would be our our favorite driver, Vernon Margine. Vernon looks like tonight he's racing as normal. The GTR Simulator, YNS uh, and Sons Heating and Cooling Toyota Tundra. It uh, looks like Vernon just got in front of Ivan. Ivan got right beside him as they came into the corner. They both got hooked together. And that calls a caution there. I don't think Vernon saw him. I mean, Vernon, very clean driver, uh, being three laps down. I don't really think he saw Ivan coming and moving up on him. And Ivan's only a lap down on this track um, to be a, a, a lap down. Speaking of our youngest driver, Giovanni Bermane, um, Ivan Garcia is our oldest driver. He drives a 72 car because he's actually 72 years old. I tell you what, that is a great, great point, Tim. Thanks for reminding us of that. It uh, does look like we got a couple of trucks getting the wave around the 46. That would be uh, one of our newer drivers. Excuse me, the 45 of Sean Kalis. 
as well as the six of Daryl Campbell. Looks like you're going to be making the lap back up. I will be surprised if anybody comes out of this race without damage. I was taking a look at that 55 car, Ryan A. Hill, that is uh, starting right behind Gary Sexton in the fourth position. And his car is, is beat to heck. Yeah, I tell you what, most of these trucks in uh, real life in the Camper World Truck Series here at Eldora, you're not getting out of this race without some damage. And that's exactly what we're going to see here. 98 of David Washington uh, trading paints with a 17 of Gary Sexton to put him in, in th third or fourth position right now, Robert. Gary, restart. Sometimes that happens, and I tell you what, the 98 of uh, David Washington is going to take every advantage he can to try to get ahead. He obviously did trade some paint with the 17, and that puts the 17 back a few laps, or excuse me, a few positions. But trust me, the 17 of Gary Sexton is going to fight his way back, and he is going to get back up the lead, in my opinion. Dirt is absolutely flying, and I know Giovanni Romani has to be happy with himself right now being in the, in the lead. Um, he's almost pulled a full second away from David Washington, who's in that 98 car, 89 of Giovanni Romani. I mean, the man is just, or, or I mean, it's 13, so is is just amazing. Yes, the young man is putting on the show. It took him a few laps to get to the lead. Like you just said, he is 13 years old. I'm pulling him up right now. It looks like Gio started back in the, what position was that? He started back he started, in 11th? He started in 11th, and he's moved up into first, Robert. Um, we've got uh, the first. The, Car qualified first. Gary Sexton has now dropped to fifth after those restarts, and it looks like the yellow is out. Uh, Gabe Wood has spun. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how. Let's pull up that replay. Yeah, actually, we're going to take this one chance, uh, Michael Domenico, to go to our only commercial break. Fans will be back in one minute, and we'll give you the uh, details of that replay. This is getting exciting. We're, we're coming to. servepro.com helping make fire and water damage like it never even happened you're watching all pro broadcasting with freedom train hey this is garrett smithley driving the number zero jd motorsport chevrolet and you're watching all pro broadcasting did your little storm knock out the power well excuse me for not noticing Hate to disappoint you, old man Winter. Better luck next time. If the power goes out, your Generac standby generator goes on automatically. Down trees, flash floods, is that all you've got? Stand up to the threat of outages with Generac and never feel powerless. Welcome back, race fans. We just took the uh, green flag for the restart. You did not miss anything. We have the 89 of Gio Bramante in the lead, but he's getting all kind of pressure from the 98 of Dave Washington. He's looking to take the high line, and on the low line, we've got the 55 of Ryan A. Hill. These guys are trying to find any kind of uh, advantage. As David Washington's in the wall, he's going to lose a lot of speed there. And Gary Sexton, who qualified first all the way two laps down now, I think he might be out of the race. Um, not exactly sure. They might be working on the car right now, but he's in the 17th position. Anything can happen tonight, Robert. Yeah, I tell you what, we get that replay pulled up, fans. Unfortunate for Gary. Like I said, he was leading most of the race, and anything can happen. And and next week, we're back on the same track, Robert. Yes, next week, we're going to have a Dennett Fender truck only points paying race. Actually, technically, uh, Tim uh, got us in the update out. Next third Wednesday is the real Camping World Truck Series race at Eldora. We are taking that night off. We're going to be having a practice session only. 
uh, next Wednesday night. The guys will be in here racing, the ones that do not want to be watching that a real live race. But we're going to postpone and reschedule the actual point truck race here at El Doro. And we'll give all the details out to the drivers soon. Now, is that going to be on uh, Fox Sports 1 or uh, a different channel? Is that going to – because I've heard there's a soccer match. It might even be FC Cincinnati, my hometown of Cincinnati, uh, in a soccer match that, that usurped the uh, the race, which I don't really agree with soccer usurping a race, but uh, apparently that's happened. I'm pretty sure the uh, Camper World Series official Eldora truck race will be on TV somewhere. Uh, we'll have to find out. Uh, Gary, sorry to see your night come to an end so short. Uh, the next caution will get, let, you, let us know what happened. If you want to help us out here in the booth, we appreciate it on this restart. Yeah, Robert, 10 4. I'm still opening up the room, so I'm just kind of, I'll, I'll add in after. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No problem. It looks like starting, we've got the 89 Gio Vermonte on the restart, the 55 of Ryan A. Hill. Uh, we got Dave Washington on the inside in third, and on the 56 on the outside in fourth. This is going to be a great restart with about 20 laps to go, about 19 laps to go here. And Dylan C. Jones has actually moved up all the way to fourth, fifth position from 21st qualifying. Josh Bonwell in that uh, number 56 ride has is now in fourth from 13th in qualifying, Robert. I tell you what, these guys that are really, really fast on asphalt, they are definitely surprising some of us. Dave Washington being one, Josh Bonwell in the 56 being another. And yes, the 23 of Dylan C. Jones, I do not think he's got a win yet in the Denver Fender's Trick Series. Actually, he's not in that series in the top shelf. I don't think he has a win there either. Right now, the 89 of Jim Ramonte is getting a mirror full of the 55 of Ryan A. Hill. And I tell you what, both of these guys are putting it on. Ryan A. Hill takes the low line, the low groove. Gio Vermonte's in the high grid. They're dead center coming through the middle of the corner. But Gio gets that run off the corner. And Ryan is going to have to figure out a different way to get around the 89 of Gio Vermonte if he wants to win this race here with about 15 laps to go. Looking in the back of the pack a little bit, the uh, number 26 car of Eric Stanford uh, just passing Judd Danielson in the 85 with Ray Richer moving up uh, to the 10th position to overtake my teammate, Blake Griffith. Exactly. Looks like actually Ray Richer. We're just watching that, fans. Looks like Ray got a little bit of help there oh. as he got spun around. I don't think it was anything intentional at all. Unfortunately, it definitely looks like the 44 of Ray Richard. Fans, as we're pulling up this replay real quick, Ray had got it really sideways uh, going into that corner. And the car right behind him, it looks like the number two. That'd be your good friend. Great driver. What's your free your team? Blake, Blake Griffin. Blake. Blake Griffith, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Blake Griffith, not, unfortunately. Not the, not the basketball, not to be confused with the basketball player of great Blake Griffin, but I do believe that Blake Griffith would like his money. Yeah, I think Blake just barely got in the back of the 44, and the 44 was already half sideways, and that's what calls that last caution, fans. So that's going to give us another chance for somebody uh, to... Uh, this might put Ivan Garcia back on the uh, lead lap in the 72 car in 16th position, and we'd have 16 drivers on the lead lap. Looks like quite a few are, are 10 plus laps down. Yeah, guys, and I would look for uh, Josh Bonwell in third place. Uh, or actually, I'd look for David Washington in fourth place. He's, he's in a good spot. He's pretty quick. He's going to be on the outside of these guys in the outside lane in the second row. Um, look for him and Gio to be working together to get a good start on this restart. Are, are you back in it, uh, Gary, or are you in the pits? No, unfortunately, uh, you know, with these sim racing, sometimes you have variables that come into play, like your cat jumping on your computer and turning it off. So uh, I missed a shift there on that one restart and fell back to fourth. And then uh, just as I was about ready to start my charge back to the front, my cat turned my computer off. So sometimes that happens, but uh, I'm up here to help you guys call the rest of this race as they uh, come around to get the green flag. Yes, sir, Gary, take this restart for us. It looks like it's Geo's race to lose. Yeah, Gio gets a good jump off on the outside. The outside's been the dominant line all night. David Washington doesn't get the start that I thought he would, so that's going to allow Ryan Hill to slide up in between those two and, and maintain that uh, preferable line around the outside. But he's going to have a his whole back end full of David Washington as they dive down into turn three and four. Gio, oh, Gio, just, Gio just hit the wall. That's definitely going to hurt him. That's going to get the 55 of Ryan Hill and the 98 of Dave Washington, as well as the 56 of Josh Bonwell. They're and you can never rule out the time. double zero. Yes, sir, the double zero of Gabriel Wood. He is wanting to fight and get it back up to the front. He led all those practice laps. He wants to get this one as well. Yeah, and it's all Geo out front. You can touch the wall a little bit here, but as long as you don't pound it, you'll be all right. And back for second place, there's contact with uh, Ryan Hill and David Washington. Look at Gio working that wheel in the inside. When you see that, that camera angle, he is working that wheel. 
It's incredible, and you just saw the 98 get a great slide double on the double zero. Uh, I think Gabriel will get on that core a little bit high to get off the gas, and that gets, puts David Washington back up to second place. And don't look now, but the 55 is on the inside of the 23 of Dylan C. Jones. This is a dog fight for second, third, fourth, and fifth. Yeah, and here's Gabriel Wood back up in the top five. I know he had a he had gotten loose in front of me, and I had gotten into him, and he fell in the back. He's, he's worked his way all the way back up into the top five, and I'm sure he's hungry for a win. But, we, uh, We've just got 12 to go this time around. 12 to go right now. Giovanni Brumani almost a lap lap ahead with nine to go. Yes, and the uh, 23 of Dylan C. Jones just got in the wall. Incidental contact. I don't think it's going to hurt him too much. And Ryan A. Hill on that 55 is still trying to use that low groove, that inside groove to make headway. I think he's actually losing time there. Yeah, there's a ton of grip on the bottom. Uh, car feels real hooked up down there but your speed gets really bogged down coming off the corner so it's really hard to make any headway the high line is definitely the fastest way around the track but if you are going to want to make a pass you're going to have to do it on the bottom that's exactly what the 23 of dylan c jones just did looks like we got a yeah six to go we will get a restart fans uh, do not go anywhere not even to the bathroom you don't want to miss this finish and we'll find out what you guys see on the uh, who calls that caution gary how'd that track track feel being being in the car tonight yeah, the track was really good. It was, it was a pretty good starting state. Uh, lots of grip to begin. Uh, as it went on, the grip kind of went away. It was a lot harder to, uh, you know, m maintain the same consistency throughout the run. But as long as you kept uh, at least your right rear tires out of the slick stuff, you, you had it pretty hooked up. The, tra the more the track slicks off, the faster it gets. A little harder to control, but you can get some really, really fast lap times. So I look for the... Uh, the end of this race to be pretty exciting. We should be getting about a, a restart with about two laps to go. Uh, that's going to put, let's see, it's going to put uh, Ryan Hill on the outside of row two. We know Gio's going to take the outside, but if Ryan Hill can get a start, I know he's really aggressive. He's really good on the dirt tracks. And, you know, when there's no points on the line, these guys might do just about anything to get a win here on the short tracks. I'm, I'm really impressed right now with, with uh, Dylan C. Jones uh, qualifying 21st in that 23 car, moving all the way up to 5th tonight. Yeah, and it looks like he didn't even take a qualifying time, so definitely an impressive run by Dylan C. Jones to move all the way up to 6th place in a good spot. Uh, I, I feel like anyone in the outside line, as long as they get a good restart, they're gonna they're probably going to move up their positions on the guys on the inside line with only uh, about three laps to go. And Gabe Wood, uh, who qualified in the second position in third right now, his car looks like it might need uh, some repairs after this race. But he's still on the track and still holding some great times. The green flag green. is out. The green flag is out. Yes, sir. It looks like Jim Romani gets a great start. But Ryan A. Hill gets an even better start. And uh, David Washington takes the low line. He's trying to make that pass on the inside. It's not going to work as he is side by side with the 55. David almost loses it, but he gathers it back up. The 55 in the wall, the 94 in the wall, the 89 in the wall. Yeah, that's all going to be sealed up for Gio as long as he can keep it straight. But David Washington can maintain second two to place go. on the outside with two to go. Yep. And uh, Gabriel Wood with a nice slide job. David Washington with a crossover back to the inside. But Gabriel Wood's got the position on the outside. Look for him to, to keep the momentum up around the outside. But it's all Gio right now as they're going to come, come around to get the white flag. But I got 55 of Ryan A. Hill trying to take it on the inside, Robert. Yeah, I'll tell you what, this is some of the most exciting race I've ever, ever seen. I did not predict this going into the night. We have had some cautions. Look at the 55 gets too far sideways. But yep. up front, it definitely looks like it's Giro Monte's race to win. Is the double zero of Gabriel Woods making a fight? Is uh, David Washington getting into him? Yeah, they get into each other for a second. Gio's going to come around and take this one. Oh, my gosh. What a finish. What an exciting race. My heart is beating out of my chest, Robert. Yeah, it's, uh, I'll tell you what, that's exciting being up here as it is down there watching these guys go but um, flawless run by Gio I know he worked his way up from a few positions back I'm not quite sure where he started but I know he wasn't up there right at the beginning so that's pretty impressive run for Gio what a race guys and what's cool yeah. about this track is uh, there, there's an actual victory lane you can pull into so look for Gio to pull into that victory lane and get some photo opportunities yeah, I tell you what, this is going to be awesome. If you guys will go over, you take your turns. I'll tell you what, Michelle, are you still there? If you go over the top 10 finishers or the top eight or nine and let uh, Tim go over the rest, and then uh, Gary, you can go over the final ones. We have in first position Giovanni Romante. Second, we have Gabriel Wood. Third, Dylan Jones. Fourth, David Washington. Fifth, Curtis Young. Sixth, Josh Bonwell. Seventh, Ryan Hill. 
8th Ray Richter, 9th Judd Danielson, and 10th, actually, yeah, 10th Blake Griffith. Yeah, Gerald Campbell uh, coming up 11th, David Wright in the 12th position, Sean Kalis on 13th, Ivan Garcia in 14th, Eric Stanford in 15th, Bo Glenn in 16th, Gary Sexton ends up in 17th position. Um, he's not going to be happy with that. Vernon Margheim in the 18th, uh, Brian uh, Coots in 19th, Jeremy Crandall in 20th. Gary? Yeah, and uh, coming in 21st place is going to be uh, Brandon Montsevas. I know he's a strong dirt racer, so I'm sure he's not happy with that outcome. 60 laps down, 22nd is going to be Jack Watts, uh, rough night. Chad Payne's going to come in 23rd. Colin Bowden's going to come in 24th. And uh, 25th is going to be Jeff T. Martin. It looks like he's the last of drivers to actually start the race. Uh, Andrew Kessler is going to score in 26th. And uh, Ethan Glenn, a new driver, it looks like he didn't have a chance to take the green flag. He's going to come in 27th to round off the uh, field. Yeah, Brandon, I think, had one of the top, uh, top three times in the practice session. So you're right about that. He probably won't be happy with that, uh, that position of 21st. Yeah, and sometimes yeah, with the uh, sim racing community, you, you know, you have uh, technical issues that could arise, just like if this was a real car and you have an engine failure. I know Brandon was having uh, some connection issues tonight, and just not just not his night to be out there on the track. But uh, I'm sure he'll be out there again for one of these special event uh, not point races. Yes, sir. Real quick, uh, we do have Bo, excuse me, there, Bo Glenn and his son, who's another 13 year old. Ethan Glenn, he took a couple laps there in practice. Uh, dirt is not his forte, Ethan's, and he decided not to actually run the race tonight. But those are two drivers that are uh, signed up for the basically past second half of our season. Paid a small fee to be able to race these non-point races and all of our practice sessions fans. Uh, obviously, Bo and Glenn are a great father-son combo. We love having that in our series, and we definitely look to see those guys having uh, much more success in the uh, non-point truck races like tonight's was as well as a lot of our practice sessions which are not televised fans but you will definitely see them in a few more we have five more non-truck rate non-point truck races fans those are at certain tracks like rockingham i think we have one at richmond uh gary if you can remember a few of the other ones they're going to be really 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 exciting races yeah i'm uh looking for i think we have darlington coming up on the schedule uh, there you go to run, so look for that to be a good one. I'm not sure of the other ones, but hey, hey, hey Robert, just a quick question before we uh, get the winners in here. Can we get my teammate uh, Blake Griffith? I've never. I, I just love to interview Blake and ask him as my teammate how the track was tonight. Sure, we can do that real quick. Uh, we'll do that up front. Uh, Blake Griffith, this is Robert, Tim, Michelle, and Gary Six in the broadcast booth. Blake, uh, how was the track tonight? How was your race? And what did you learn? The track was. Slick. This was my first dirt race ever. I uh, had never been on dirt, so I was very, very nervous. But uh, it was it was a lot of fun. It just took a while to get used to it. But uh, thanks to thanks to Gary giving me some tips and pointers, uh, I finally got the hang of it and pulled the tenth place out of it. Yeah, and uh, Blake, uh, I hate to say it, buddy, but shortly after our little exchange on the track, uh, my cat came and jumped on my computer and turned it off. <laughs> Oh gosh, man. Yeah, I, I was looking back. I was like, I hope Gary won that. And then I turned around and I went to the results and noticed that you had exited out. I was like, oh, geez, I did. I've, I've messed him up. Blake, do you think there's anything you could have done to uh, get a, a little bit better finish for JTM Motorsports tonight? Or you think you did your best out there? Well, for this being my first time on dirt, I think I've done pretty good. I think I could have finished a little better, though. But I um, Somebody, I think Ray Richard might have checked up, and when he did, I checked up to miss him, and the 42 just uh, drove into me hard and ran over me, and I, I got spun and went back to 16th. So I worked my way from 16th back, back up to 10th. So, again, I'm pretty uh, top, happy with that. A top 10, I, I'm very happy. Congratulations, Blake. We're going to bring the top three in and uh, talk to them now. Awesome. I appreciate it, guys. Yeah, thank you, Blake. All right, now we have got uh, our second place finisher of Gabe Wood up here in the broadcast booth. I will let Tim, uh, I'll let you and Michelle both ask him some questions. Well, Gabe, you qualified um, second tonight. You seem to be the top guy on the track all night long. Giovanni Bramani comes out of qualifying 11th and dominates the, the race. Is that a question or are you just trying to make me mad? <laughs> I'm just I'm just trying to make you mad, Gabe. 
No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering where, where did you, where did you go wrong? I mean, we thought uh, you and Gary would be right up there, and I know Gary had I, I, some unfortunate instances, um, you know, later on with his cat jumping in his lap, which I'll, usually doesn't I'll happen you, if you're uh, on the real dirt track. But yeah. where, how, how did you feel about your race tonight, Gabe? I tell you what happened. The fastest I was was right around the bottom, and unfortunately, the way we started uh, with the track state. The bottom technically had never been run, so there was way too much grip down there. And every time I went to go, I don't know if you noticed, but the first about 10 laps, I hit the wall on the inside through three and four about two or three times. I did. I saw that. That was that was exactly what it was. The car was bogging down and ended up torquing. You know, the car would uh, gain grip and shoot me right into the wall. It'd pull a Miley Cyrus right into the wall. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I... Before we continue anything, I'd like to apologize to Dave. That was not my full my intention. I I told him that, but God, I knew he was going to have the bottom going into three and four, and I was completely content on running third. You know, after the night I had, I was in what twelfth at one point. You know, I I was completely content, and I rode the high side just to give him room, and it just bit right on the top. If you look at the replay. I straightened up just a little bit to try and keep the car up there, and it just turned right down the racetrack. It gained grip, and I came down into Dave. I, that I feel awful about it. Well, that track that track was slick for everybody tonight. That's for sure. Yeah, it was. It was well. It was gaining grip, and the bottom. I had run it enough, I guess I had knocked the rubber off because it was starting to come in, especially through three and four, and I, that's why I knew Dave was going to get second from me, and I was completely okay with third, but unfortunately it was, it was taking him out. It was an exciting race to watch. It was I, I, My heart was pounding on my chest with those uh, few laps to go. Yeah, especially the end of that race was very, very exciting. You guys put on a terrific show. Uh, who would you like to thank tonight uh, for your third place finish, Gabriel? And I am sure that in one week or when we have this rescheduled points race at Eldora in the trucks, you're going to probably come out on top. Who would you like to thank? Well, uh, I'd like to thank uh, the new truck, um, you know, Veterans Motorsports, the team that I work for in the Xfinity Series. I decided to, you know, paint up a truck like they we ran in uh, Daytona, Honor of the Fallen, and then in 22, it's an organization, 22 veterans a year uh, kill themselves due to uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. So their mission is to end 22 and get it down to zero. Um, you know, other than that, the Veterans Media Group is just, you know, a great group of guys that I'm able to work with, uh, Steve Morgan and them. And I got to thank the guys on the ARCA side, uh, David King, Andy Hillenberg. You know, got to thank those guys. But I feel, I really don't feel like I should be in the second spot. I feel like I should be third where Jones is and Washington should be right here. Hey, no problem. Things happen, especially on the dirt here at Eldora. You did a terrific job, especially all the laps you uh, you were leading there in qualifying. And like I said, you are the top of the class here in Dominus TYJ Racing in the trucks. We love it every time you're in the race. And I think the fans love it every time you're behind the, uh, the microphone, which is a lot better than I am. Anyway, congratulations there, Gabe. And we will definitely, actually, the fans will be able to hear you tomorrow night for the uh, uh, Glen Race Top Shelf Cup. Well, that'll be fun. Uh, looking and, forward and to it. Congratulations on your real life promotion, Gabe, as well. Michelle and I, uh, from Michelle and I, congratulations on that. That's uh, that's just amazing. Oh, thank you. I gotta actually, I gotta go hit the books. I gotta go study for my uh, drug test. <laughs> yes, sir. We, we want you to pass the drug test. So you gotta probably lay off, uh, you know, that uh, whatever you call it, extra strength Tylenol. Don't take four tonight. Just take just take one or two. All right, Dave. Take care. Yeah, I'll give them to Dave. That'll work. Take care. What All right now, guy, Robert. yeah, he is an amazing guy. We have been really, really blessed here at Dominus CYJ Racing, and uh, we all know why that is, but we've got some terrific drivers, we've got some terrific sponsors, and we've got some unbelievably terrific uh, commentators, including Tim and Michelle Rangers, Gabriel Wood, Ray Richer, Curtis Young. Uh, we've also got Tanner Talrico jumps in here every now and again, and if I'm missing somebody, please forgive yeah, me. But you now are. you're missing somebody that's in the booth right now, Gary Sexton. Gary Sexton, my yeah, I'm sorry. I tell you what, Gary does more than just commentate. Gary is the go-to man outside of Judd Daniels. And I tell you what, we got some admins and uh, guys that are watching this race. You just have to give me a second here. Uh, Chad Payne, Judd Danielson. I'm, I'm still going to miss some people. Um, so help, help call them out for me, uh, Gary. Uh, they're they're yeah. admin. We got uh, Joe Johnson. He commentates as well. Joe Michael. Johnson commentates. Does a great job. Michael D'Amico uh, with All Pro Broadcasting. 
Absolutely. We would not even be here, trust me, fans, without Michael D'Amico. Michael has the best camera angles of anyone in the business today. Yes, sir. And we were in no man's lost land about six months ago. And luckily, thank the good Lord, we came across Michael D'Amico. It's been a great relationship so far. We're looking to more. But right now, let's interview the winner of this race. <laughs> no, he's been waiting forever. He's got his mic off. Hopefully, he turns it on real quick. Gary Sexton, please interview down in Victor Lane, Gio Bramante for that incredible win. Yeah, we're down here in Victory Lane with uh, Giovanni Bramante, uh, my rival the past couple uh, weeks here and practicing on dirt and whatnot. And I expected to be battling him for the win tonight. But Gio, you came out on top and uh, pretty much dominated the second half of that race. And tell us how your truck was tonight and how the track was and what you had to do to hold off those guys behind you because they were coming hard. Um, yeah, it was definitely really difficult. Um, I just got really good starts and I kind of pulled away from everybody and just kept that gap. But uh, I was kind of mad that you didn't race because you were really good. And yeah. Yeah, I was up there. I led the first, I think, 60 laps and then uh, had some technical issues and my cat turned off my computer. So <laughs> it's all good, but <laughs> it, it happens yeah, who, here. Who, who let that track out at my home state of Ohio, Gary? That's what I want to know. Who, who let the cat out that jumped into your car onto your lap? <laughs> yeah, right. Well, it's all good. But uh, Gio, that was a really awesome run tonight. I know you were fast. I think regardless uh, whether I was still there or, you know, if Gabe was up there battling the whole time, it would have been uh, it would have been tough to hold you off and and uh, real impressive run for you. Um, gl glad to see you get a win. Is there uh, anyone you'd like to thank for your win tonight or anything else you want to add about the race tonight? Uh, I'd like to thank Dave, Andy, Andrew, whole Ages team. That's awesome. Yeah, I know those guys are a big help, and they kind of took you under their wing when you when you joined the uh, series. And awesome to see the amount of speed you have for for such a young talent. And uh, we look forward to seeing you out there uh, in future races out here. Yep. Now, Gio, quick question: Are you going to be running Camping World maybe next year or the year after that? A couple of years. So you're going to be in the in the big show. Yes, sir. It's going to be nice to see. Just don't forget the little people. <laughs> no, he won't. Gio is one of the greatest uh, hearted young men I've ever run across. And by the way, hope to meet in real life someday. I'm going to make it to one of his races if I can. Maybe we all can make it to one of his races and meet each other in person. Real quick, I did forget another very, very special friend, very special commentator, veteran member of the Domino's TYJ Racing family, Ray Richer. We also wouldn't be here without him. He is not only an admin, he is one of the best voices in commentating here. Not to slide anybody that's helping us tonight, but Ray has got an excellent voice. He's an excellent driver. Looks like tonight uh, he had a little bit of bad luck, started in 10th, finished 8th, but uh, he is there every time you need him. You can never worry about canning on Ray Richard. He's always there, as well as you other guys. So real quick, we do have a free Domino's Pizza winner. Do not ever want to forget about that. <laughs> tonight it is Tim. Dawson from Richmond, Virginia. He must either know Gio or figured out Gio would be a fast guy in the truck tonight. He is going to win that free large Domino's three topping pizza. So congratulations to Tim Dawson and for Tim Rangers, Michelle Rangers. Wonderful couple they are. Gary Sexton, Michael D'Amico. Don't forget fans, click that subscribe button. This is Robert McFarland. You've been watching the Domino's TYJ Racing Dennett Fender Truck Series live here at Eldor Speedwell and All-Pro Broadcasting tomorrow night. You want to make sure you have your dinner. If you didn't win the free pizza tonight, you want to make sure you get ready. 8.50 p.m. Eastern, Top Shelf Cup, some of the best drivers you've ever seen in iRacing will be on the track at Watkins Glen, and it is going to be a three-stage race, 15 laps, 15 laps, 30 laps, and yeah, I guarantee you, you're going to have a hard time picking the winner at halfway because that strategy is going to mix things up like you have never seen. So congratulations. We'll see you then. Good night, guys. Good night, Robert. Thank you.